I taught myself to draw about 25 years ago, and I've been drawing more or less every day since then. And if you go through all of my 100 plus sketchbooks, you'll see one subject popping up quite a lot, me. I draw a lot of self-portraits. And you might ask yourself, why? Do I think I'm really good looking? Well, yes, kind of, but that's not the main reason. Drawing self-portraits has helped me to learn to draw portraits of other people. In fact, it's helped me to draw just about anything better. And it's given me insights into my life that have been incredibly useful and profound and therapeutic. If you look through the history of art, you'll see that a lot of great artists made self-portraits. Da Vinci, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Picasso, Warhol, Kahlo, and many others. One of the most likely reasons you see all these self-portraits is practical. The model is always available. You don't need to ask someone to sit for you. You don't need to worry about their patience or their reaction to your experimentation or pay them. The model is probably not going to complain about the results. So as a result, you feel free to experiment, to do some crazy things that may or may not work. You don't have to explain them to another living soul. You do you. So if you want to learn how to draw a human face, pull up a mirror and get to work. So that's the first reason to do a lot of self-portraits, because it'll help you to draw better. But there's another more important reason that I've been drawing my old bald head all these years. It's that my self-portraits have shown me so much about the subject. They've shown me who I am at this moment. It can be difficult to understand yourself to be self-aware, to see yourself clearly, to see yourself as other people see you. But when you sit and stare at the mirror and you start to put lines or brush strokes on paper, you're using all of your faculties to explore not just your appearance, but your essence. It can be like a therapy session where you talk about your feelings and someone else helps to give you clarity. But in this case, your therapist is a page of your sketchbook. Sometimes I'll sit down to do a self-portrait because I'm bored and I can't think of anything else to draw. But sometimes I feel confused or lost. I don't know what it is I want to do with my life. I don't know exactly where my head is at. And sitting down to draw can clarify things. The process focuses my mind and it allows the flow to begin. And the flow that is essential to doing my best creative work. I can set aside the selfie and then I can move on feeling balanced and clear. There are so many creative choices I can make when I'm drawing a self-portrait, and they all contain meaning. I can pick a particular medium. Confident ink, ruminative pencil, soft watercolors, bright gouache. I can choose a specific set of colors. I can make decisions about composition and pose. And often I don't know precisely why I'm making these decisions. It's not super thought out. It's just what feels right at the moment. But when I look back at them, at those choices, they tell me an awful lot about the artist making them. Even years later, I look at the drawing and I can discover further insights about myself at this time. I can see my emotional state much more clearly than words alone can convey. As we say, a picture is worth a thousand of them. When I encourage people to do a self-portrait, a lot of them come back and they say, I look really old, or I look pretty miserable, or I can't believe my schnoz is so big. It's inevitable. When I spend a lot of time concentrating and looking at myself in the mirror, my face relaxes. My features return to a natural, neutral position. I'm not putting on a forced smile like I might be doing in a photograph. I'm not holding a pose. I'm simply being. And that forces me to really see what I look like in a way that selfie photos and even a quick glimpse in the mirror while I'm brushing my teeth won't tell me. They show me who I really am. One of the most essential parts of being alive is getting to that knowledge, the knowledge of who we are and what we can be. And looking at yourself long and hard and accepting who you are is an essential part of being an adult. If you see things you don't like, you can accept them or you can change them, but only if you know what they are. I'm an old and a bald man with a pudgy face and wrinkles, but I've earned this face over a lot of years of living, and so I'm okay with it. I can see me now as the world sees me, 
And that's a much better way to function than to be in a state of delusion or denial. But I also see the things that I like about myself in the process of doing self-portraits. I see things about myself that I've never noticed before. I see the way my eyes crinkle when I smile. I see the, the unique features that make me who I am. I see my grandfather. I see my son. And in that process, I learn to accept and to love myself more. And that's something that we could all use a little more of in our lives, right? And so I continue to draw myself day after day, year after year, because in the lines and the shadows of my self-portraits, I find meaning and purpose. I find a reflection of myself and a connection to the world. And in that, I find art. It's easy to begin. Get a mirror, get a piece of paper, get a pen, and just start drawing what you see. You may or may not be happy with the first portrait you draw, but that should just encourage you to draw a second. Try to make it into a daily practice, a diary of sorts, a visual record of who you are today and how you've changed since yesterday. It'll help you to see the world as an artist sees. It'll help you to live more comfortably in your skin. And it can be fascinating and an awful lot of fun. Why not try it today? <laughs>